So let's talk about using some hard skills uh, in terms of how JetGPT can help us. And think of the hard skills like those kind of those technical skills. And we're gonna use some examples that are really accessible to everybody like uh, Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint, how we can, I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how we can make that better for us. It's not a whole Excel course, I'm just gonna do some short examples on that. But if you're like a, a coder or a software engineer, you know, I'm gonna show you how JetGPT can help you with debugging or helping write code too. It'll literally blow your mind. And if you're not one of, if you're not a software engineer, you should still watch the end because you're going to look at that and say, is there some technical stuff I want to improve on that, you know, just if it can do this for coding, what can it do for me on, on what I want to do? Maybe with something like Excel or PowerPoint. So let's do that with JetGPT. So let's say we, we use Excel, right? You know, spreadsheet in our, in our business and, and, um, you know, I use spreadsheets all the time and I love pivot tables, but I always forget how to do them because I don't do pivot tables much, right? And you might not, you know, you, you, but you and my audience might be an expert in pivot pivot tables or you might be like, what's a pivot table? So let's find out and, and actually show us how the steps are to make it. Not like what is a pivot table, but how do I make a pivot table? That's what I really want to know. And I certainly don't want to know the history of spreadsheets. I mean, I'm sure it's exciting. My wife, the accountant probably would love it. No, not so much. So may I say like, how do you make a pivot table? And if you don't even know it, just describe what it is. Like, you know, how do I start my information, you know, with columns with an arrow on top or something like that, right? But how do I make a pivot table in Excel, right? All right. So again, this should not come back with Excel as a spreadsheet that is loved by millions around the world, you know, or something like that. So here it is. To create a pivot table, Microsoft Excel, follow these steps, right? So then it's going to walk you through, select the data, go to the insert tab. It tells you where it is on the ribbon, click on the pivot table button, and it walks you right through how to do that. So if I don't make pivot tables often and I'm trying to search the internet, maybe I'm trying to watch a YouTube video or something like that, look, while you're doing that, I already got the answer, right? I got the answer in chat TV here. And it's walking me through how to make this, which is an Excel is not, it is a, can be a little tricky to do, um, but at least gives me started and walks me right through step by step. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Maybe I want to respond like, that's great. I love you, ChatGPT, <laughs> or, some, or something like that. Um, you know, so that's an Excel pivot table, right? Maybe I'm working in PowerPoint. I say in, now I might want to start a whole new chat, by the way, but let's say I don't. Let's say I start in PowerPoint. I didn't capitalize that. And let's say in PowerPoint, how do I, um, how do I, how do I, con how do I make bullet points better? Like in PowerPoint, you know, how can I make my bullet points more, graphical, you know, better in that way, more picture oriented versus just like a thousand bullet points or something like that. You know, and this is a pretty wild question, right? Will it tell me? And because um, I don't really, I'm not telling you specifically like up here where, how do I make a pivot table? I'm asking more general, how can I do that? Can I do this? How do I do this? And then it says there are a few ways you can do this, right? And you can say, you can use shapes and lines to create bullet points, use icons, use images. Use a smart art graphic. This is where I was kind of trying to get to. Um, like, you know, smart art graphics is a little bit more, it's not advanced, but it's something that a lot of people wouldn't know about, right? So, you know, how do I, um, you know, how, let's say I want to pick up on that, right? So how, how do I use number four, smart art graphic, step by step, all right? So, so use smart art graphic as a bullet point PowerPoint for all these steps. Select the text you want to turn into bullet points. So first I'm creating bullet points, go to the insert tab, smart art, and then it'll walk me through how to turn these into more of a graphical unit, right? And click okay and all this. So it's really walking me through this. So uh, if I'm somebody who really doesn't, I use PowerPoint, let's say if a person uses it a lot, but they really never need to make it super fancy or try something new like with bullet points and a more smart art graphics. I don't have to take a whole PowerPoint course. Just just told me real quickly how to do that soup that simple type thing here and step by step it's right there I don't have to Google search it and try to find different places or anything I could just do it right here right there all right so so that's some a couple hard skills there from Microsoft Excel now let's look at something really advanced like let's talk coding now I am not a coder um, you know so I am not an expert in this I wouldn't even know what this thing is saying I'm gonna start a new chat though but I want you to know this because it's talking about how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript you know those are the type of questions it can do. So maybe I want to, um, um, 
uh, you know, how, you know, like something like, you know, how do I make um, API code, API code, wrote this down in Univert. Did I get there right? I got my notes here. Yeah, see, I didn't type that wrong. They're not sure what Univert is. Univert isn't anything. Um, it's Unirest in Springboard. See, I knew I was typing things right. So how, how do I, see, so yeah, that's a good example. I did that intentionally. Do you see what I did intentionally, unintentionally? See, I'm not a coder, right? So you're probably saying, it's not Univert, it's, it's Unirest. Right? <laughs> and it's in Springboard. Come on, Steve. You know, how do I make an API code in, you know, in Unirest in Springboard? Now it's gonna tell me how to do that, to make an API request using the, Uni the Unirest library in Springboard. And it's gonna tell me that, give me some things, and then this is, where, this is where your mind's getting blown. If you've not seen this before, if you're a programmer, your mind's just gotten getting blown, isn't it? Because it's like, wow, they're giving me the actual, what do I type, code, the whole bit. Once the library's included, you can, uh, you, you can uh, make an API request with the following code, and there it goes, right? This will send you a get request to the specified URL, right? And um, and there I've got more coding, you know, more information on there too as well. You know, um, and uh, and this will keep going on there too. And maybe I just wanna like, you know, explain Unirest Uni in uh, in Springboard, right? Maybe I want, I want to, uh, you know, just have more general knowledge on that if somebody did. Um, as far as all that, and it talks about like, okay, what is this? We just learned all the coding stuff. Again, I'm not a coder, but it talks about what this is, how it works, and you can how you can use this code, you know, request APIs and other word services, and et cetera, et cetera. But this is a very high level technical skill, right? This is the type of stuff people spend a long time getting educated on. And here I'm able to, you know, get start getting information on this and getting some exposure to this with, and there's some examples here too. I can even copy the code here, look at that. I can copy the code to my clipboard, so I can then paste that code. Are you, are you properly freaked out now if you're a software engineer? If you have not seen this before, th th you must be getting freaked out. I hope you are. It's freaking me out. Maybe it's because I don't know enough, right? So let's say, um, uh, and we're gonna stop this chat, but I had a previous chat where, let's see if I have it here, um, debug code requested. So I created a code, uh, um, I asked it, could you debug this code, right? Here's another example. And, I, and it'd be like, I'd be happy to if you gave me the code. <laughs> so I didn't give it the code, right? So let, this is the code that I wanted debugged, right? So, um, and let's say, um, I'm gonna create this and I'm gonna say, let me, just, let me go back to a new chat. And I'm gonna take that and say, could you debug this code? And copy paste that code, hit enter, and let's see what it says. It's gonna analyze my code, and it's gonna tell me I'm having an error, right? And it's debugging it for me. There's a potential error in this code. It's related to the integer, right? Y is equal to zero. If you see in here, Y is equal to zero is gonna be a problem if you're dividing by a Y, right? So to avoid this error, you can add check before a decision, all this. And here's how you can modify the this function to include this check to make sure that your Y is not being uh, used as a, as a zero in a division problem that's gonna give you a bug error and, and you know, be a problem. And here's the code with this modification. Again, I could copy this code and now I have this and I can start using this and see how this has been added to my chat GPT library. So those are some examples of hard skills, whether it's something that a lot of us use like Excel or PowerPoint and some skills that can get real detail oriented like related to um, you know, coding like or whatever that might be, whether it's in Java or Python or whatever, or maybe you're looking for something specific to like SAP or Salesforce or something like that, you can do that as well. That's really more limited by your imagination. So uh, I hope you found this interesting too, because sometimes it's trying to find the answer and you just want to find the answer so you can keep on doing your job. This is where ChatGPT can really help with really complex and challenging hard skills. But the key is you've got to give it the information to do. So don't be like me and say, could you debug this code and not give them code. You gotta give them the code. <laughs>